you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Courtney. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I have got three Dollar Tree farmhouse inspired Valentine DIYs. That is a mouthful. Um, I am gonna show you these three tutorials. I'll take you through supplies, tutorial, supplies, tutorial, supplies, tutorial. And if you like this type of video, please leave it a thumbs up so that I know that you want me to work in more of these types of videos where I might do two to three crafts in one video. Also, you are going to see um, with the little wreath, the heart wreath and the love box, I did run into some issues. So there's some real life crafting going on. But in the end, the projects turned out exactly how I had planned in my head and how I had put in my craft notebook. The final project was exactly what I wanted. So you will see some little issues that came up. Um, but you know, it's real life crafting. What can I say? All right, guys. And also very quickly, thank you to those of you who popped on Facebook live on Saturday to say hi and to join me when I made the little reverse canvas and shabby chic hearts. Believe it or not, I still haven't quite finished the finishing touches. But as soon as I do, as promised, I will put up a picture on Facebook so you can see those final projects. And I guess that's it. So without further ado, let's get in to this tutorial. Well, actually three tutorials. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, I'm gonna start with the rustic rope heart. So you will need some type of heart wire form from the Dollar Tree. They have several options. You will need two packs of the nautical rope. You will need some lace and or ribbon. And you will also need a hot glue gun for this project. So the first step for this project is to remove this little arrow. Now, I didn't realize it just slid off, so I originally was pulling it, and you'll notice that I actually broke this little heart form, but I will fix it later on. So basically, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the tinsel, and I'm just gonna continue unraveling it until it's completely off my form. Now that all of the tinsel's off here, I'm just showing you where it literally just slid off. I'm going to go ahead and take the ribbon off the top. And as you can see on the side there, that's where it broke. So I'm just going to put some hot glue and glue it back together. And then once it's put back together, I will move on to my next step. Now that it's glued back together, I'm getting my rope and what I decided was I was actually going to see if I could just feed the rope between these little uh, tabs, these plastic tabs that are sticking up. But once I went through, the spacing didn't work out. So some of the loops would have been bigger and some of them would have been smaller. So I decided I'm going to have to cut all these little tabs off. So what I'm going to do is grab some of my little snippers here. And these are the ones that I found work best. They snip off super easy and I'm just going to go around and take off all of these little plastic tabs. And now that all the tabs are snipped off, here I'm snapping the top little circle part and this is where I have my other little snafu because I snip it too far and then I break the top. So again, I'll just hot glue it and there you go. Yeah, I broke it. But that's okay. I'm not really concerned. I got it all snipped off and I'll just glue it back together. All right, and now I'm ready to start wrapping my rope. So I'm just going to put a bunch of hot glue at the bottom of the heart. And then I'm just gonna go through and start wrapping it through. And I'm just gonna make sure I pull it kind of tight because I don't want it to be super loose. So I'm just gonna keep on wrapping until the entire heart is covered. And here, I just wanted to show you, this is how far one strand of rope went. And so that's why you need a second pack. It's not very much. So if you have just a little scrap piece of rope, that's what I ended up doing instead of using this. I realized I had a little piece that I could put there. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in this last little section with a scrap piece of rope and then it'll be all wrapped. And now it's all wrapped. So now I'm just going through and just kind of trimming where the two pieces of rope met and then trimmed the bottom. And I'm just using hot glue to kind of smush it down. There is a back to this. Um, that's where I kind of had the rope end. So I'm just using my tiny scissors and trimming off all the extra little fuzzies from the ends of the rope. Okay, and now you can decide. You can leave it plain if you want to. 
or wrap it with ribbon. I chose to wrap it with some of this lace that I got from the burlapfabric.com. And I'm just gonna take it and wrap it. I'm not gonna anchor it with hot glue all along the way. I'm literally just going to glue at the bottom and then just keep wrapping. Now that it's all wrapped with lace, I did wanna just kind of tie a little bow here to see if I wanted to put a bow at the top. So I did that and then I decided I really didn't want to. So I just left it how I have it now. And I'm very happy with how the finished product turned out. This is what it looks like. I really love it. It's hanging on my blanket ladder that has a blanket with those same tones. And I think it just looks really great. All right, let's move in to the Love Potion bottle. So you will need one of these oil or vinegar bottles. They also have colored glass bottles that you could pick up to use. You will need this Love Potion card. You will need some twine, nautical rope, lace, and or ribbon. You will need one pack of the large pearls and one pack of the small pearls. And you also need your hot glue bed. So the first step is going to be to scratch off this little label. It does scratch off with your fingernail. I tried the little plastic scraper, it didn't really come off. So now I'm just using my little hot glue gun tool that's actually metal and I'm just scraping this off. Now, if you do not like the sound of fingernails on a chalkboard, I would not recommend using this method because it literally is not enjoyable, the sound that it puts out. I just turned up my Chris Stapleton and turned up my music really loud and scraped away at it. But um, I did end up trying some other methods using rubbing alcohol, trying to see if I could get it off another way. Again, I tried the scraper, it just didn't work. So for me, I just went ahead, suffered through it and scraped it off this way, but just forewarned, it makes a terrible sound. And now the torture is almost done. So once I finish getting this scraped off, I'm just gonna take some of the rubbing alcohol, sorry that the camera's shaking here, and just clean off my surface. Anytime I work with glass or plastic and I'm gonna be applying something, I always wipe it down with rubbing alcohol. I just find that the things will stick better to it. And once I'm done doing that, I will be ready to start cutting out my potion card. Now I'm gonna just take this card and I'm simply gonna peel off the bottle and then I'm going to save the little pink bow, the little drink me tag, and then I'm going to cut the love potion and the little XO heart. I did not want the Be My Valentine part of my label, but you certainly could just cut the whole label if you wanted to. And if you wanted to make this a little more farmhousey, you could print something like this on cream colored or tan colored paper and then use lace as a bow or a soft colored ribbon. Once all my parts are ready to go, I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm simply going to wrap the top of the bottle with some twine. Now this is where you could use lace, you could use ribbon, you could use um, the nautical rope from Dollar Tree if you wanted to, it's up to you, but I'm just gonna wrap it. I'm not anchoring it as I wrap, simply just a little glue on the bottom and then when I get to the top, I'll put a little hot glue at the top. All right, and now I'm working on the potion part of this bottle, so I'm just going to end up using both of these bags. And all I'm doing is I'm sprinkling in a couple of the big pearls and then some of the small. I just like the pearls because it kind of reminded me of bubbles, but you could use other colored beads. You could put in rock salt. You could add glitter to it if you wanted to. I mean, it's up to you. You could add salt, just regular salt. And if you want to have a different look, you could put in some of the little fairy lights and then just put the little battery pack at the bottom or behind the bottle if you wanted to. So there's a lot of options here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up this bottle and then I will be ready to put on my labels. Now that my bottle has got the little bubbles in it, I'm just simply going to hot glue my label onto the front and then I'm going to take the little drink me tag and add a piece of twine to that and then attach it to the bottom of where the twine is wrapped on the bottle. And then I'm just gonna take the little pink bow and hot glue it to the center of where the twine is wrapped at the top. Mm -hmm. 
And here is my final product. I think it turned out really cute. I'm currently decorating this little tray and I have a few more things to add, but I think it looks great there. And now let's go in to our last project, which is the Love Flower Box. So for this project, you will need four of these love signs. You will need some burlap ribbon. This is the six inch ribbon. You will need some flowers and greenery. You will need some white chalk paint. You will also need 16 of the Jenga blocks. And then of course you will need your hot glue gun and some E6000 glue. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this project is to simply cut off the twine. I will save these little pieces for scraps. And then I'm gonna take off these little hangers and I will also save those for future projects. And I will do this for each of the four love signs. Now that the hanging hardware is off of all of these love signs, I'm going to take my chalk paint and I'm going to use a foam brush and I'm just going to paint the fronts and the sides of this love sign. Now, there is an option to not attach the burlap to this. So if you just want to make this box and not use the burlap, you are going to want to paint all sides of the love sign. This is what it looks like after one coat and this is kind of the look I was going for so I was happy with that. If you want more coverage you are going to need to put more coats but like I said I was going for a farmhousey type vibe so one coat was enough. Now I'm going to take my roll of burlap and I'm simply just going to glue my love sign to a piece of this burlap. Now you can go ahead and cut the burlap to size if you want to. I chose not to because I didn't want to have to deal with little pieces of fray and the little strings that get in the way while I'm trying to put this project together. So that is why I did not cut it to size. I can't say that this is the recommended method. This is one of those things where it may have made my job harder, but again, personal preference. I just didn't want to deal with all of the aftermath of burlap being cut. So um, that is what I chose to do. I will just simply add a piece of burlap to each of these love signs. The next step is to start assembling the box. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with two pieces at a time and I'm simply gonna end up attaching this as you can see here to the bottom of this sign. And also you can kind of see the burlap is a little bit annoying and in my way, but to me again, it's better than having frizzies getting stuck in my glue here. So now I'm gonna put some E6000 as soon as I can get it out of the tube on the bottom. And what I realized this first one I did, I didn't need to put it on all the surface because the letters actually aren't going to make contact with the entire bottom. So I learned that on the second one not to do that, but I'll do E6000 and then I'll put some hot glue to kind of get that quick little um, adhesion that I want. And then once these are stuck together, I will let them dry for quite a while. Um, I did let it dry overnight and I'm just going to use some paint cans to kind of help hold it up in place. All right, my box is all put together, it has dried, and now what I'm gonna do is basically go through and I'm just gonna simply trim off the extra burlap at the top and the bottom of the little box. I'm just snipping it to where it kind of falls a little bit below the love signs, and I will do that on both ends. Once the burlap has been trimmed on both ends, I'm simply now going in and kind of adjusting the burlap as you can see and smushing it into the corners, putting some hot glue and just making the sides very smooth as far as how the burlap lays inside the box. And now I am taking some of these Jenga blocks and basically what I'm making is my own little L brackets here. I'm just making these to kind of reinforce the inside of the box. So I'm just gonna make several of these brackets. My intention was to do four at the top of each one, but once I started putting them in there, I realized they wouldn't all fit. So once I kind of got the burlap in place. I'm just going to attach some hot glue and then stick it in the corner of the box up at the top. And what I realized basically is I could get two of these L brackets in here and then I kind of just put extra pieces on the other two corners. 
So once the L brackets were on the top and bottom, I filled it and what I used to fill it was two bunches of roses, two bunches of these green spiky things with purple flowers and also a little purple thingy that I don't remember what it was called that you'll see in the picture in just a second. But I didn't end up putting any of the foam blocks or anything in there. They sat exactly where I wanted them to so it worked out great. And right now I'm wrapping some twine around it because I thought it needed a little something but then I realized I didn't really like that very much but I will show you the picture of it in just a second. And here's what it would have looked like had I left the twine on there. Please pardon the mess around it. Real life crafting there. And this is how I finished it off. I put it in my entryway. I did want to show you that if you do end up getting some real flowers for Valentine's Day, you can get one of the Dollar Tree vases and set it on top of a foam block and put it inside the box and it will be a great little vase to display your flowers. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day and until next time, see you later.